You've probably opened Roblox Studio and started building. The top studios, the ones behind games with billions of plays, use tools like Git, VS Code, Roho, and Wally to work faster, collaborate better, and write cleaner code. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to set up a pro level Roblox development workflow, the same one that I've used across games with over 150 million plays. Let's get into it. Roblox Studio is fine until it isn't. If you've built anything more than a hobby project, you know Studio can get messy very fast. You can have long file trees, everything jammed into a few massive scripts, the list goes on. Regardless of if you have a big team or not, version control is an absolute must. What happens when you delete something important and undo doesn't actually remember the changes? Or when you need to go back to yesterday's version and you have to dig through different files? Without version control, you're in for a huge hassle. Trying to work with others in Studio, good luck. You'll be copying and pasting files, sending messages like, don't touch the script right now, I'm working on it, etc. Roblox Studio's tooling just doesn't cut it. Studio's editor works, but it's basic. You don't get rich IntelliSense, fast refactoring, or even linting. The advanced tools I'll show in this video will solve all of these issues. That's why big studios and professionals use tools like Git, VS Code, Roho, and Wally. You get full version control, fast editing, reusable packages, and much cleaner code. Let's start with what most developers use, Roblox Studio. It's where you build, test, and script directly in the game engine. But what if you want to write cleaner, more maintainable code outside of Studio? That's where Roho comes in. It will connect your VS Code project to Roblox Studio, syncing your files live between them. Git tracks all your code changes over time. Every time you commit a change, you're creating a restore point. And with GitHub, you can back up your work online and collaborate with teammates. Think of it like Google Drive, but for code. Wally is your package manager. It lets you install and reuse shared libraries. Think of how many projects you use profile service on, or if you use React or Fusion, all of these will come from Wally. Start by downloading and installing VS Code. Follow the prompts and save an icon to your desktop if you want. Next, download Rokit's latest release from GitHub. Links will be in the description. Rokit is a toolchain manager that will manage Roho, Wally, and more. After downloading Rokit, install it by extracting the zip and running the exe file. You may be prompted that it's an unrecognized app. This is normal and you can ignore it. After installing Rokit, you will have to restart your computer. We're now going to create a Roblox projects folder. This is where all of our Roblox projects will live. I like mine in documents. Let's now create our games folder inside of Roblox projects. Mine will be called tutorial, but you can name it whatever you want. In VS Code, open your games folder that you just created. Next, we'll need some VS Code extensions. Start by installing Luau Language Server. This allows us to program in the language Roblox games are scripted in. Then install Roho, which will facilitate the communication between VS Code and Roblox Studio, as I mentioned earlier. To initialize our project, we'll have to run a few commands in the terminal. Open the terminal inside of VS Code. Run Rokit init. Rokit add Roho. And Roho init. Commands will be in the description, by the way. Starter project files have now been created. The default project JSON file will map out the hierarchy for Roho to control. By default, this will include a base plate and some other instances. I recommend removing everything under workspace in this file unless you plan on Roho controlling instances. Everything under source is where you will write code. There are some auto-generated starter scripts in there to begin with. In Roho, your file name and then dot server dot luau means that it's a server script dot client dot luau means it's a client script and if it's just dot luau that means it's a module script press Control shift p and search roho and then open the roho menu 
Then install the Roblox Studio plugin. If your Roblox Studio is already open, you'll need to restart it. Then click the green arrow button to start live syncing. When you open Roblox Studio, you should have the Roho plugin. Click it and then connect. You will need to accept changes if there are any. As you can see, the scripts that were created in VS Code are now shown in Studio. VS Code should now be live syncing with Studio. Any changes you make will sync with Studio when saved. Here are a couple small extensions and tweaks that aren't technically required but I highly recommend. The first being the Selene extension. And then also install Stylua while we're here. In order to use Selene, we need to create a selene.toml file. This file just needs one line, and it's written here. Selene is a linter. That means it checks your code for basic mistakes or bad practices that aren't necessarily picked up by the compiler. I'll link the official documentation in the description. Stylua will format our code to make it follow the official style guide. Typically, we want it to auto-format every time we save, and in order to do this, we need to edit our settings. Again, press Ctrl plus Shift plus P, and search User Settings this time, and click the JSON option. Paste the following settings from the description into this file. Now, whenever we save a file, it'll be auto-formatted by Stylua. Another must-have setting is Auto Imports. Go to the Luau Language Server Settings. And scroll down until you find the Imports option. And then enable it. There are a couple other settings within this extension that you may want to change, so I'd recommend looking through it. With this setting enabled, whenever you start typing any script, package, or Roblox service, it'll automatically suggest it and write out the entire require path or get service call. It's a game changer. We're now going to set up our package manager, Wally. Start by opening up the terminal and running rokit add Wally. Rokit add Wally dash package dash types. And Wally init. A Wally.toml file has now been created. This is where we will link the packages we want to be installed. To add a package, we need to go to Wally's website. The link will be in the description. I'll start by adding the promise package. You can add whatever you want, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. Click this gray install box on the right to copy its path. Once copied, paste the path in your wally.toml under the dependencies section. I personally like to use Pascal case for packages, so I'm going to change that here. To add another package, simply add the link on a new line. If a package only needs to be on the server, like profile service for example, you should create a new server dependencies section and paste it here. To install the added packages, open up the terminal and run Wally install. You'll see packages and server packages folders have now been generated with your linked packages. In order for Roho to recognize and sync these new package folders, we need to add them to the default project JSON. Add packages under the replicated storage section. And then add server packages under server script service.
Now if you go back in Roblox Studio, you should see the installed packages folders. You can require packages like any other script. Unfortunately, Wally doesn't automatically export types at the moment. To fix this, we need to run the Wally package types command in the terminal. I'll have this command in the description. If you've never used Git before, download it and follow the prompts. Link will be in the description. And then create a GitHub account. You'll need to restart your VS Code and then open the terminal. If this is your first time using git, we'll have to sign in. Enter the following commands from the description. Make sure your email is the one linked to your GitHub account. You should only ever have to sign in once. Go to the source control tab on the left and initialize the repository. You'll notice now that all of your files are green and have the letter U next to them. This means that they are currently untracked by git. Typically, we want git to ignore our installed packages. We can add their paths to the .git ignore file to do so. Also, add the auto-generated files like sourcemap.json and wally.lock. Now, when we save our git ignore file, you'll notice git will ignore the files we just added. You can commit changes within VS Code. To do so, go to the source control tab Write a message and click commit. Git will now be locally tracking your files. In order to put our project on GitHub, we must publish the repository. After following the prompts, your project will now be on GitHub. Here, you can easily view files, branches, commits, and more. This video won't go super in-depth into Git, as that's a pretty big topic, but here is some basic usage to get you started. After you've made meaningful progress or changes, you should commit with a short message of what you worked on. You don't need to publish after every commit, but I will here to demonstrate viewing changes on GitHub. Branches are a major part of Git. Typically, when working on a specific feature or change, a new branch would be created. In this example, I'm going to create a new feature branch for a tank class. Any changes made inside of this branch will not affect outside branches until it's merged and the reverse is true. Changes made outside of this branch will not affect it unless pulled into. On GitHub, you can manage branches, review code, and perform pull requests. Once merged, you should pull the changes into your local repository.
like I said before, Git is a pretty big topic to cover, so I would recommend researching some more on your own. At this point, you've set up everything you need for a professional grade Roblox development workflow. VS Code, Roho, Wally, Celine, Stylua, and Git all working together. You've got live syncing with Studio, a package manager for reusable code, auto formatting, linting, and version control. This is how real studios develop at scale. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing so you don't miss what comes next, and feel free to drop any questions in the comments. You can find all the key settings, code snippets, and commands from this video below the like button.